Exams are approaching. Ooh, stressful times for many of you. Well, in this video, I will try to relieve you a little of this stress regarding the multi-choice section of the physics exam. I will share with you 12 super useful tips to maximize your chances for a high mark at the test. Hello, my name is Edouard Henny. I have been a physics tutor for years, helping hundreds of students in physics pass their high school diploma. So, of course, I have seen a huge amount of past papers, and I'm going to share with you my experience about this through a series of 12 tips. The tips I present in this video are focused on the IB exams, but are also relevant to the exams of other programs. So even if you are preparing for A-levels, AP, India, CBSE, or any other secondary school diploma, you should stick around. I'm pretty sure you will find some of the ideas in this video useful to your situation. That said, let's get started. Tip number one. Understand the context of the paper and what is expected from you. I averaged the grade boundaries of the IB Physics Multi-Choice paper, which is called Paper 1, for years 2016 through 2019. To get a 4, which is a pass, you need to answer correctly 12 questions out of 30 for a standard level paper and 17 out of 40 for a high level paper. That's about 40-45%. This is really not a lot, especially when you know that there is no penalty for wrong answers. If you get half of the answers wrong, you still get a 5. 40% of the answers wrong will give you a 6. And 30% will give you a 7, which is the highest mark. Look also at the ranges between the grades. A difference of 6 questions correctly answered out of 30 makes you go from a 2 to a 5. Let this fact sink in for a second. So, the objective here is not to get everything correct, but to make sure that you get enough correct answers to get a good grade. You should also consider how much the paper counts in your final grade. It is important, especially when you are setting up your self-study plan. In normal times, paper 1 counts for 20% of the final grade, so it is significant. In times of pandemic, where paper 3 is cancelled, it counts for 30% of the final grade. That makes it really worth looking into. Tip number two. Know about the exam instructions way before you sit at the exam. How much time do you have per question? There are 30 questions in the standard level test that lasts 45 minutes, and 40 in the high level test that lasts one hour. That gives you an average of 90 seconds per question. Calculators are not allowed. That means that calculations with numbers will be quite straightforward. So, if you think you need a calculator to answer a question, that means you probably missed something. And finally, the data booklet is allowed during the test. The data booklet contains most of the formulas, but be careful, not all of them, just most of them. This leads us to tip number three. Tip number three. Learn how to use your data booklet effectively. Do not rely on your data booklet to get inspired. This is not its purpose. Scrolling through the data booklet for inspiration can be quite time consuming. Instead, you should use it to double check a formula if you have a doubt. That's what it is for. And get familiar with it in advance. Know where the formulas are so that you do not waste time searching during the test itself. Tip number four, read the questions and the graphs carefully. This is so obvious, but you'd be amazed how many easy marks are lost because of this. So many stupid mistakes could be avoided if the students just took the few extra seconds needed to just read the question. I know this is a very teacher-like thing to say, but it's true. <laughs> Remember, the difference between a 2 and a 5 is just a few questions. Avoiding the reading mistakes can bring your grades up significantly. For example, if you skim through a question quickly, 
you might miss a word or two, like a not in the sentence. You can easily imagine the impact such a word has on the answer. If there is a graph, look at the axis. What quantities are involved? What does it imply? For example, kinetic energy can never be negative, right? So when I see a question like this one, well, up, I already know that these two answers are wrong. Also look at the units which are used. Don't assume that the units used are the standard units you always use. For example, time can also be scaled in milliseconds, or mass can be expressed in tons. It is amazing how many marks are lost because of this. This is one of the most avoidable mistakes. Yeah, making these mistakes can bring a 6 down to a 4, or even down to a 3. Tip number 5. Start with what you know best. In the IB Multi-Choice paper, questions are in the same order as the curriculum. So the test starts with uncertainties, mechanics, thermal physics, waves, etc. You want to build your confidence at the beginning of the exam. So start with topics you are more comfortable with. This will put you in a positive and confident flow. Then you can come back to the beginning and run the exam sequentially. Tip number six. Recognize the patterns. This tip is for when you are preparing for the exam. A typical example is ratio questions. You never have a test without a handful of these. And if you encounter racial questions for the first time, they can be a real headache. But if you are trained on how to solve them, they become a piece of cake. I'm thinking about shooting a video to show you the techniques to solve racial questions. If you are interested, please let me know in the comments. Racial questions are not the only patterns you can find in a multi-choice test. There are questions that come back over and over, test after test maybe with a different wording, but these are the same questions. If you work on many past papers, you will detect these patterns yourself. Tip number seven. Consider answering a question by elimination. This does not apply to all questions, but as a rule of thumb, you should read all answers before starting calculating stuff. Sometimes three out of the four will just not make any sense, saving you a huge amount of time by just selecting the only one that does. A typical example is when you are asked to select between four propositions for the expression of a quantity. But when you read the answers, you realize only one has the units of that quantity. <laughs> you do not need to derive anything. You already have the answer. Tip number eight. Don't allow yourself to get stuck on a question. When this happens, just move on. Remember, you can get a third of the questions wrong and still get the highest mark, a seven. So it is much better to spend the time on making sure you haven't done stupid mistakes on the questions for which you know the answers to. If you have the time at the end of the test, you can always come back to it. And the best thing is that you might even see it under another perspective and the answer will appear to you naturally. Yeah, the brain is a strange machine that knows how to work in the background. Tip number nine is super important. Don't mess up when filling up your answer sheet. Even if you have all the questions answered correctly, it will not matter if your answer sheet does not reflect it. Make sure you give yourself enough time not to have to rush in filling it up in the last minutes of the test. Actually, during your self-study, you know when you test yourself in exam conditions, do it with an answer sheet. Print the paper you want to test yourself with and also print a blank answer sheet you can find on the web. When you mark yourself, only consider your answer sheet. If you messed it up doing a self-test, well, it's not a problem. It will just be a lesson learned, right? But if you mess up your answer sheet doing a real test, you're basically screwed. Tip number 10 is also an important one. Pay special attention to keywords in the questions. Some questions look really complicated sometimes, and to be truthful, they are. But within the text of the question, there could be a keyword that will give away the answer. 
Imagine a question like this one. What do I see here? I see the two words constant speed. That means there is no acceleration. Therefore, the resultant force is zero. Done. In some cases, like in this question, a word is used to express something and then it's repeated with another word, meaning the meaning is expressed twice. Or sometimes you will find a word written in bold characters. These things are on purpose. These are hints to the answer. So when you notice this, don't neglect it. Tip number 11. Answer all questions. You can't find the answer? Well, guess. Yeah, in the IB exam, you don't get a penalty for answering incorrectly. It gives you a chance out of four for an extra mark. And if you can eliminate some of the proposed answers, those that do not make any sense, you increase your odds significantly. Let me share with you some last resort tips on how to guess when you have no clue on how to answer a question. If you are pretty sure your answer to the previous question is correct, guess a different letter. For example, if the answer to the previous question was C, answer to that question A, B or D. Statistically, you slightly increase your odds by doing so. Let me think about another one. Oh yeah, you know these questions where uh, you have a list of propositions and the choices you have, A, B, C, D, is something like proposition one and two are correct, proposition two and three are correct, proposition one and three are correct. And the last choice you have is something like none of these propositions is correct or all of these propositions is correct. Well, there is a 50-50 chance that the correct answer is the one that combines all propositions or rejects them all. So if you cannot narrow down the answers by reasoning, this one is a good bet. Tip number 12. Be smart with your exam preparation strategy. When you start working on your first past papers, you are not testing yourself. You are there to get familiar with the exam and discover what you need to improve. Don't time yourself at least not at first. This could hurt your confidence for no good reason. Instead, take your time in understanding well the questions, identifying the traps, recognizing the patterns or the questions that come back often. Only when you start to get quite experienced with this type of paper, then you should try testing yourself in real exam conditions. In real exam conditions. That means not in front of your computer. You print the paper. You print the answer sheet, you take a rubber, a pencil, no calculator, you take your data booklet, you turn off your phone, obviously, and then you close yourself in a little room and you have a timer, you do your exam. Voila, I hope these 12 tips will help you in getting high grades at your physics multi-choice exam. If you enjoyed the video, you know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe, click the notification bell, all this stuff really encourages me in producing new videos. In the meantime, I'll see you soon in another episode of Physics Made Easy. Ciao.